Hey everyone, welcome to our streaking show or the Jeff and Jamie show powered by streaking. Today we're going to talk about how to talk to strangers. Didn't our parents warn us against that? And also I stopped saying this one word and it changed everything. Welcome to our streaking show. Let's start streaking. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. A little pause there. I know. I was listening to the music. You're just enjoying it, just going forward, like, yeah, this is so good and mellow. Yeah, I'm I was loving enjoying this music. it. How are you doing this morning? You know what? I'm full of energy, life, and enthusiasm. How about yourself? Same. No, you're not. Don't lie to everyone. You are absolutely just like, ugh, I'm feeling a lethargic I this know. morning. I, I am this morning. Oh, my goodness. I've been struggling with some health things and i'm like my body i'm just dragging my body along that's what i am doing <laughs> you are You're come dragging. on body are we're just dragging you along we gotta go along places. for the ride yep so that's where i'm at this morning <laughs> uh that is uh so by the way just uh, as we get started here the uh beta beta testing for the app or for the upgrade of the app is going on right now and uh, we've had quite a bit of response to that however we still have open spots which is great. Uh, if you'd like to join the beta test for the new app, one of the things that's different in it, if you're already one of our testers, in the new app or the upgraded app in the beta test, and it takes a little bit of doing to get uh, to be a beta tester, but the community aspect is just at another level. It is. It really is. It's awesome. The ability to be able to communicate with other streakers is really, really fun. It. I have been inspired, even with just our small little group of streakers that have been testing the alpha version of it, every single time that a new release has come out or a new uh, version has come out where you know now we can post videos and now we can post photos and now we can do an audio file and just all, you know, or type in a text and post to what it is that we're doing on our streak, it, it just inspires me as I start to see other people doing it. And it's just going to continue to get better and better and better. I agree. And I said something that makes me laugh because it ties into a little bit of what we were talking about, what we want to talk about this morning. But I said, being able to talk to other streakers is fun. But really, and that's one of the words that the, the, the article that we're going to discuss when we start this morning is, I stopped saying this word and it changed everything. And it wasn't fun, but it was enjoyable is the word. I just uh, that came he stopped right to, saying. Yes, the word that he stopped saying and changed it. And as I was thinking about it, I'm like, okay, that's really true. And I said, oh, being able to talk to other streakers through the community is fun. I'm like, it's so much more than fun. It really it's is. It's valuable. It's inspiring. It's and you just gave it away. You building. gave away the word that we should use instead of enjoyable, which is valuable. And that's fine that you gave it or away. Or useful. His was useful. Is it, was it useful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought, because I thought he said in there that it was value. Uh, he said, let's see, recently I started to rethink this. I did a survey of my build for tomorrow podcast audience, which, by the way, this is out of Entrepreneur Magazine. This is Jason Pfeiffer, who I believe is the editor in chief. Really good writing. There's quite, quite a few writing. things. This yeah, a great article. Yeah, that I really loved Just about short. his writing. Yep. Yeah. Um, build for tomorrow podcast audience. And I discovered that people don't say they enjoy the show, they say it helps them feel better about the future. Then I started to think about why people read Entrepreneur Magazine. Are they, are you reading for joy in the way someone eats cake for joy? Unlikely. I suspect that many people don't read this magazine because they want to read a magazine. They read Entrepreneur because they expect it to have knowledge that they find valuable. valuable. Yep. So I loved that that, I, I, so reading this article helped me to notice that I thought, oh, I do say things like that. Did you enjoy it? Oh, that was fun. That somehow that creates this idea that, oh, it's it's worth doing. It's worth listening to or reading. or But really, I liked that he said, I stopped using the word enjoyable, or for me, fun, and changed it to useful or valuable. Mm. And so... So as you think about that, as far as I stopped saying this one word and it changed everything, um, I think that that's where the whole streaking methodology came along. There's been a, quite a few people that I've talked to in this last week, and you and I are going to go out and do a conference uh, where we will present streaking in three different workshops. And I, as I've been thinking about not only what we're going to present there, but also the whole streaking methodology, I just I, I think about words and how significant words are. And I've I've come up against a lot of people using the word habit. 
And I've had an allergic reaction. And if you've listened to any of our podcasts in the past, you know that I get an allergic reaction to the word habit. And not to say that, you know, habits haven't served people well for a long time. I think, though, that habits have painted this broad brush over all type of human behavior. And I believe that what's happened is habit has developed into the two definitions, which are, I'm going to do something repeatedly, first definition, second definition, something I do automatically. And everyone hopes that the first definition will become the second definition. In fact, when I'm talking to sales leaders, one of the what telltale or or one of the things that they get excited about is oh so you're going to teach my people how to have these behaviors be habitual where they're calling on customers and being proactive and the and why do they get excited about that because they think it's going to be automatic right because they think that if you it's again this idea that if you put a lot of effort into something at the beginning that it will become automatic at the end and the thing that's interesting and and I think I believe that in all fallacies or things that a lot of a a huge group of people believe, but that really aren't totally true, come, it starts because there is a kernel of truth to it. So when you think about this idea that if you put a lot of effort into something at the beginning, that it will become automatic, there is truth to the fact that when you put effort into something in the beginning, that anything we're learning Anything we're doing new, anything that we're adding to our lives that hasn't been added before takes this element of intentionality very much at the beginning, a, a level of focus that maybe you haven't put on it before, a level of emphasis, a level of intentionality and consciousness that right. hasn't been there before. Right. And what we want to believe is that if we do that, that eventually it will become so second nature we don't even have to think about it. And the hard part is that things become 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 better at them and it may become easier for us to do those things, but very, very, very few things become so automatic that we don't have to add intentionality behind them anymore. When I think about that, and I think about the sales leader that I work with that wants it to be automatic for his team, in other words, we're just going to have automatic behavior that gets more sales and has more people that are knocking down our door or that we're knocking down their door and just are accepting our message and we're closing more deals. I That's, to your point, the fallacy is based in a little bit of truth, but the fallacy is that it will become that. In other words, growth and good things will always be something that we need to put intentionality around. Yep. It will always be something that we need to be deliberate, that we need to be mindful. Mm-hmm. All of those words that go to the conscious mind are the ones that we are going to be activating with streaky. So that's why I get back to the to the word choice. The word choice, a habit is something that, yeah, it can be automatic, but choosing to write a sentence or write an article weekly that will never be automatic. Mm-mm. Even today, I was thinking about it today. You know, the OG streak of running and flossing my teeth. Those are the two OG streaks. I was thinking about them today and I thought, you know what? If I did not have a streak, I probably wouldn't go run today. And if I did not have a streak, I would lose track of if I floss my teeth or not. Mm-hmm. Now, those are physical streaks. And you may say, well, Jeff, come on. How do those things help you grow? <laughs> Well, if I have my physicality about me, if I'm healthy and fit, and also my teeth aren't falling out of my head, I think that that you know, helps me to grow incrementally every would, single day. I would agree. And I would agree with you totally. Come on, honey. If wouldn't you want to be married to the toothless wonder? You know what? It's always been a secret dream. <laughs> I haven't shared it with, let's see, anyone. And, <laughs> but I would totally agree that because I felt the same way as I've been struggling with some physical issues. Um, there are several days that I would not have gone out and run. Or walk. Actually, I've been walking a lot because running has been difficult. Yeah. And and I think that I'm so grateful for my streak because the walking has been helpful. It's one of those situations that the streak is what's gotten me out the door. Without it, I don't think I would have gotten out the door. I just didn't have the willpower to, or the desire to kind of make it keep happening. But the streak would get me out the door. And then once I got out there, I would feel better. I would feel more, I'm like, okay, this is what I need to be doing. This is good. That's why when he talks about in this, you know, stop saying one word, which is, I hope you enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. Two, I hope you found this useful, or I hope you found this valuable. 
that also changes, I believe, his mindset and it changes my mindset to, for example, with this podcast and what we do. I hope that people find it useful and find it valuable and are able then to apply a streak in one way or another. That's what I hope with the book too. Mm -hmm. I hope when you purchase the book that you come away from it saying, you know what, I'm going to start a streak. In fact, I would say I would say this, that that is the difference between many, many, many books out there that are written on habit mm -hmm. is you don't go away saying, well, I, I think what happens is you go away from those books thinking, you know what, I need to start some new habits. You may, you may think that, but more often than not, when I talk to people after they've read streaking, they come away saying, I started a streak. I mean, it's like actionable mm -hmm. right now. We can do this. And I think I've been thinking about this a lot because I've read a lot of the books on habits. And one of the things that's difficult about saying, well, I have a habit, I have a good habit. I think people are nervous to say something is a habit because unless it's a bad habit, people are totally okay to say I have a bad habit of doing this. But not as often do you hear people talking about their good habits. And I think because this idea that it's automatic and I'm doing it all the time is overwhelming and, and you think, well, I'm not doing it at this level all the time. Or maybe you were doing it for a little bit, but now it's dropped off. And Or for me, my running example perfectly is that I'm not running as fast or as far as I was. Like I've decreased in my abilities because I haven't been feeling well. And so this idea of saying, well, I've got this habit, it's difficult to say that to other people because you're nervous about the judgment of how good that habit is. Ooh, that is really good. I had not thought of it in that way. And in fact, I want to take a little segue here. And this is this is a cool segue. Recently, um, and, and it has to do with habits because as you, t as you talk about habits and building good habits and bad habits, one of the things that you'll hear is that I want to I want to build good financial habits. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, that will never be automatic. And so rather than saying the word habits, you change this one word, it will change everything. Say the word streak. I want to streak on financial uh, ability and capability. I want to set a good streak around uh, watching after my budget mm -hmm. or watching after uh, what it is that I spend or save on a regular basis. I want to set streaks on that. See, that's an actionable word. Now, where I want to segue is this. You recently found the coolest app for our children and the coolest financial device. Oh, I have I think, I, it. Yeah. I, before we get into talking about, to talking to strangers, how to become a master of talking to strangers, will you do, I think that is so valuable what it is that you've discovered there and how it is teaching our children how to be intentional and mindful about what it is that they spend and how they spend. Okay, we weren't gonna talk about this, but I will totally talk about it. I've been looking for an app that would help me, well, I, I've been researching allowance like I have a lot in the past. I My original belief on allowance was that it needed to always be connected to work because I grew up in a family of the belief, you know, nothing comes for free. You need to work for it. But I think there's a lot of people that would share that belief. Right. I mean, and hey, so, if you're not working for it, you're not getting it because I don't go out into the world and get paid for free. For free. No one's just giving me money. Money yeah. doesn't just, although. It's not falling from the tree. I'm just <laughs> not even going to say go there. there right now. Don't but, go there right now. <laughs> so the basic premise is that you're not going to be, you know, money's not just going to be landing in your account. You're going to have to work for it. And so that was my foundation of allowance is it needed to be connected to work. However, I struggled a lot with my own personal um, issues with money and how I felt about money and the, and the emotional connection that I had to money and, and the fear of it, the scarcity mentality. And so I was, reading, I was reading an article, and this was several years ago, that talked about allowance, thinking of allowance differently in the sense that allowance isn't just teaching your kids to work, but maybe allowance is this opportunity for them to learn how to manage money. And you can't learn to manage money without money. And that changed my philosophy on allowance that I thought, okay, that's right. I want my children to not be scared of money. I want them to not, I want them to understand where their personal challenges with money lie in that, in the sense that, so we have seven children and each one of them responds to money a little differently. Some of it, some of them save it and don't ever want to spend it. Some of it spend it the second they get it. Some of them want to learn more about it and are inspired and like, I want to make more of this money. And other ones are like, oh, I don't care. It's important to learn 
how you Isn't feel that amazing? about money. In our family, we have every single one of those attitudes that you just described in every single one of our children. Each one of the kids has a different way of approaching how they view and feel and and are motivated or not motivated by money. And so when I read this article, it really changed my understanding of how I wanted to raise my kids with money. I'm like, okay, I want to give them allowance so that they have an understanding of how to work with money. They need to have, and this article said they need to have a consistent expectation of income each month to understand how to budget it. And that made sense to me. And so I've been looking with our, I had kind of fallen off the map a little bit and with these younger the second half of our family, I'm like, okay, we got to get back on to teaching them about money. So I found this app. It's called Greenlight. And what it does is it allows me to... And this, by the way, is not a paid promotion. This is totally free. Greenlight is just absolutely benefiting from what we enjoyed and what we found value in this. I mean, it's useful and valuable. So first of all, it's an app. It's basically mostly, it's best used on your phone. Um, I set up an account so that I can take money directly from our checking account and put into what's called a parent's wallet. So I have money in my wallet. And then each one of my kids, we were able to apply for a debit card. And they they applied for this debit card. And when the debit card came, it's great because each card has a picture of them on the card. So it's their card. That's their ID. And it can be how young? I mean, as young as doesn't I matter. doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. Right. So our nine-year-old now has a debit card. Yes. 14-year-old has a debit card and the 18-year-old has a debit card. Yes. Now, all based in this green light uh, philosophy, well, not philosophy, but this green light app. So the app is a company that retains, you know, we transfer money into it. Transfer money into and this then personal you can, wallet and then I can disperse that money however I want. So I've got three kids on that have debit cards right now. And it's great if you have, to, it gives you a lot of control or you don't need to use as much control if you want, but it allows you to control where they spend that money. If you want to, you can set limits on certain yeah, stores. I don't believe in that, but I know, but it does give you that. <laughs> allowance. It also says when I transfer money, so I can instantly transfer money to their debit card instantly. For example, I was in target last night and, and our nine now he's 10 years old now. Oh, that's our right. He just turned 10. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday chance. Our 10 year old wanted to get something and he had gotten birthday money cash and he wanted it on his debit card. And so he gave me his cash. And while we're in the store, I transferred what he gave me in cash. I transferred now into his debit card um, right there in the store. Available. And then he right around, he right away turned around and was able to buy a birthday gift with that money on the debit card. I am blown away right now. And we get, that is phenomenal. we get text messages and emails saying where they've spent their money um, at, or if they're low. And then I'm also able to set them up on chores and allowance. And it'll ask me each week, I can set up an automatic allowance that pays automatically without me having to do it, or I can go in and do it manually. But when I set it up automatically, it sends me a text message. I got one this morning saying, has Bowen done his chores? Unless you say otherwise, he will get his certain amount of allowance tomorrow because I pay him on Friday. So there is a linkage so there is between a link chores if I want to. and the allowance if you want to. You if don't necessarily I want to have, have to, it but based there is a on link. That. The way that I've set it up is they get an allowance. It's not enough for them to do a ton with, but then they also have chores. So this is the other thing that I've loved. While they're at school, I can think, oh, I really want them to get their laundry folded when they get home. So I just put that in as a one-time chore for that day with an amount that I'm willing to pay them if they get their laundry folded by the end of the day. And then they, when they do it, they check it off, and then it comes to me, and I can pay them right then or pay them at the end of the week. But it's instantaneous. So what I There's- see then is in dealing with money, and this is just so cool, is you can link it to specific work Mm -hmm. and you can also give them a steady income. I do both, yep. So that then they can learn how to budget their money and how it gets spent. And, you know, right out of the shoot, I know that Chance, he immediately, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this. And they did. They did. And they recognized that they're out of money very fast. In fact, one of the neat circumstances, Bowen, uh, wanted this really cool, uh, I don't know, it was a cool kind of building thing that he found on Amazon but realized that he couldn't do that and go, go bowling. bowling. He didn't have enough money. He to didn't go have bowling. enough money to do both, and so he had to decide, and he decided to cancel the order out of Amazon and to go ahead and and go bowling with his friends. I loved that because now it was his choice. He was the one that was dealing with that. I didn't have to decide. Well, do I give him the money to go bowling, or it was like, look, you need to budget it. You need to figure it out. You need to find out how it is that you want to you want to work with this money. And I've had that first experience where that 
at the time he was nine, bought something that I thought was just, I'm like, that's so cheap. He's going to hate it. But when you say that as a parent, they don't believe you. So he went ahead and bought this little thing that he thought was going to be so cool. And he gets it home and he unwraps it. And it does exactly what I think it's going to do, which is break in 10 minutes. And he's so (laughs) disappointed. He's like, well, that was a waste of money. That w- connection would not have been Boom, made baby. if it was my money. Learning is in progress. <laughs> yes. He doesn't care about wasting my money. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> so, but ma- wasting his own money. Wasting his own money. Now yeah. all of a sudden that's different. So that's where uh, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because that is intentional behavior. That is something that now, for example, with you and I, we have a streak to open our financial app, which we start, we switched over to Simplicity. We were using envelopes before, but now we're using Simplicity. Simplify. But our, simplify, sorry. Simplify. Quicken. And that is, we now have a streak, or my streak is, and I've had this streak since uh, envelopes as well, to open the app at least once daily. And in opening the app, that gives me an opportunity to look at where we have either spent our money or where we want to save our money. Because what we're doing right now is save, we're trying to put a huge amount into savings so that as we get ready to buy a new home, that we have that money uh, accessible to us to be able to be there. Well, with being blind to it, not knowing what it is, is not going to help me. So by opening the app on a regular, on a daily basis and having a streak around that, and the streak is the intentionality. I have a streak of opening the financial app daily. It is not a habit. It is not automatic. It is not something that will automatically come. That's why I'd say I would challenge everyone to change the language. Whenever you hear the word habit, very few things actually fall into the category of being automatic and uh, the, the repeatable automatic thing. In fact, most things for growth are in the intentionality and the deliberate phase. And so you just switch it to being to saying a streak. In fact, we just, this last weekend, so we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we have a general conference every six months. And in that general conference, there are speakers that talk about all kinds of different subjects, uh, spiritual subjects as well as real-life application subjects. And I cannot tell you the number of talks that I heard that we're referencing being deliberate in the laughably small things mm-hmm. that I just thought streak, streak, streak. I think it's really important right now with the way that the way that things are happening in our society and the way that people are feeling is to be able to have these small things that we can do every day that allow us to feel like we are making progress, like we can depend on something, like we we've got this thing that we're doing every day that's helping us. So it was a great example. I loved this. I'm just going to reference this one. This isn't anything of what we were going to talk about today, but one of the talks talks talked about how um, when you're lost, you walk in circles. And he referenced that thing that says, oh, I'm lost. I'm I'm walking in circles. And this was uh, Elder Dieter F. Uchtdorf who said this. Yeah. And, and, and he said, they've actually done studies that test out that that saying. If when you're lost, do you walk in circles? And so what they did is they took people out into a forest and they basically said, We want you to walk in a straight line. That was that was the only thing that they, they didn't know where they were, but they just said, just walk in a straight line. And it was true, they couldn't walk in a straight line. They they and he said what was fascinating to me is he said, What happened? is that as they get walking, they don't have confidence in what they're doing. They don't feel, so you start to second guess if you're still walking straight. And because of that, that changes the decisions that you make and you start to literally walk in kind of a circle pattern. And he said that, so I found that so fascinating. So he said, it's really important that you have landmarks in your life. And he talked about spiritual landmarks, spiritual things that you are doing consistently that keep you knowing you're going in a straight path. And that can apply to so many things. I mean, obviously, spiritually, it applies. But what that's am I going to do? As I thought about it, I'm like, okay, having my streaks has done that for me. Those times when, and and so this is what I thought when he said that. And I've been thinking so much about this because I have a couple streaks that I've been doing for years, literally years. Um, running, checking our finances is, is one of them. Um, small acts of kindness. I've got like two years on that one. And sometimes I sit back and I think, I've been doing this thing for two years. Am I noticing 
a difference. And it's been fascinating because one, I've had to sit back and sometimes there's a noticeable difference in a few areas that I'm like, oh yeah, I've totally changed in this area. But then there's a lot of times that I sit back and think, okay, have I really changed? And I start to notice that I have, but it's been really gradual. And if I hadn't had the streak that kept me doing it all the time, Mm -hmm. I would have stopped doing those things before I was able to recognize that there was any progress. Right. And so you take our financial one, for example, because I had so much emotion attached to my feelings about money and a lot of fear attached to it. If I didn't have that guidepost, that, that landmark of doing my streak where I open the app every day, where you're intentionally, where I'm intentionally mindfully, deliberately mindfully looking at the money it. and just being whatever the emotion was, you and just had to go with now, it. Being able now to look back on six years and recognize patterns. And what are the patterns that I recognize? That I am more consistently looking at it for longer periods of time, yet there's still periods of time and sometimes longer periods of time where I am just opening it and filing that one transaction or categorizing one transaction. And so because of that landmark streak where I've been able to do it long enough to recognize and trust that, okay, I can go a couple of weeks with just opening the app and, and categorizing one transaction, knowing that the pattern is I do reach this point where I spend time, prolonged time going over things more or something happens and I'm like, oh, I really want to learn about investing And so I'll look at our finances more and look at investing and spend more time doing something than I would otherwise. But that only happens because of the consistency. Mm -hmm. The consistency of having done that so much has given me confidence, but also helped me to see the patterns. The patterns of times where you do spend more time on something and the confidence in the patterns when I'm spending little bits of time on something, but I'm still doing it every day intentionally and consistently. Absolutely. As I think about the walking in a straight line, I think of that as who do I want to be? And that is the line that I want to draw is that that aspirational place that I have somewhere out there is the person who I want to be. If I don't have streaks that help to keep me in the straight line to who I want to be, I'll just end up walking in circles and I've seen it in my life. Circles, yep. For a couple of reasons. You may start things over again or you're like, okay, I've got to start over because it's been too much time. Or you just don't feel like you're making progress because you haven't been doing it long enough to see it. And so you just start. So you change your you change what you're doing. Like, oh, okay, that doesn't work. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try. And we do it all the time. I think that's why those jokes about the dogs and, and being distracted are so funny where a dog sees a squirrel and you're like, squirrel. <laughs> I think we do that in life sometimes. And especially now when we live in a society where we are literally bombarded with information and new ideas and new, there's so much information that it's very easy to be like, oh, I should do this. Oh, I should do that. Oh, maybe I'll do this. And you just, without something that What was shows the one article the that we were talking about? It was... Uh... The, the the 52 things and the three strategies to make a difference in your life. Yes, the, the title of the article, I was like, 52, really? There's 52 strategies. 52, here you go. Here Let, we go. Let's make okay. it happen. I'm just going to apply all those right, right away. Right. It's too much. That's the exact point is there's so much and then we want to do all of it at once. Mm-hmm. And and so streaking has has given me this confidence to understand how growth works, that it is slow, that it does require intentionality, that it's the consistency that makes a difference, not the magnitude of what I'm doing. It's not the magnitude of doing something. You know, I do something once a month, but I do it super, super huge when it needs to be something that I'm doing daily at a smaller level to really make the difference. One of the other talks was about um, the British cycling team, which is referenced in several books. I've actually read the original story, so I can go back to it. But the British cycling team, which was absolutely awful as far as their performance record was concerned, and they hired a new coach, and the coach basically started to deliberately and meaningfully say, we're only going to worry about laughably small things and change them one thing at a time. And what I saw there is this deliberateness and basically set up streaks. He Mm -hmm. set up a streak to say, find one thing, find one laughably small thing that will make our team better daily. And now the British cycling team is the envy of, of the cycling world. And it's, it's one of the 
uh, studies basically that has been done in the laughably small things, recording it. Because that was the other thing, you know, the laws of streaking, you'll find them. And, and this is one of the things that we experienced as we started to peel apart why it was that we were having success at each of these different areas. And as we peeled it apart, it was because one, we chose something that was laughably small and we were, and we laughed at ourselves for doing it, but we said, you know what? It's laughably small. And then secondly, we recorded that we did it every single day. Mm -hmm. And then third, we created the community around it or joined a community and that community started to celebrate with us. Now, when we say is something like, yeah, I've been writing a sentence for 2,086 days, you know, the, the, the activity itself is laughably small. Right. But the compound interest over time is magnificently large. And the, and the streak, the idea of changing your thought process from how much of this can I do to how long can I keep this alive is what allows you to have that consistency long enough to see the fruit of your labors come to fruition. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, this really is making a difference to give you confidence to keep walking in that straight line. In the straight line, because the streak is keeping you in the straight line. The streak is those landmarks that keep, you keep passing them and you're like, okay, I'm going in the right direction. This is what I said. This is where I want to be walking. This Mm -hmm. is where it is. And the neat part about it too, is you get instantaneous feedback in the sense that I was reading an article just, or actually reading a book uh, the other day. And part of the book is inputs versus outputs. And they said, if you're not loving the inputs, then you ought to check your outputs. In other words, Mm -hmm. what output you're aiming for. If you're not loving what it is that you're putting in, the streak that you're doing, then go ahead and check your output and say, is that really the person I want to be? Or is it someone different? Right. I think that's... That's huge. Yeah. Being able to... Because the inputs are going to take you to an output. No matter Which is what. what I loved about the British cycling, the British cycling um, team, team mm-hmm. is that they weren't focusing on becoming the best. Mm-mm. They were focusing on making these small changes consistently Every single day. and and just super intentional about making that small change. That Absolutely. was where the focus was. Absolutely. So, I All right, I do want to go. Well, the thing I, I think that brings us to. No, you don't want to talk about. This? I don't. I want to end this podcast and talk no. about it in another one. We got. We still got a little bit of time here. Why? Why? Because I shaking think this your head. one. I think this one's a good one that we can spend. Another can we start it a little bit and then it. go and then and then start it on the next one? I, I think, think we can. Good. <laughs> She's giving me the look. I'm getting the stink eye right now. I think we can talk about it just a little bit and then move forward. Nope. Okay, I'm getting the no. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully this has been a wonderful podcast for you. Useful. Very useful. And valuable for you. <laughs> As we've talked about the importance of language and being able to use the right word, that the the power of words and being intentional in that. Yeah. Which in my mind is speaking to streaking, being intentional in the words that we speak. Absolutely. We've talked about helping with allowance. I think allowance, that one that one in particular is quite uh Teaching significant well and and our change of mindset in that as far as mm-hmm. teaching your kids because now you can also teach them to have a streak okay you need to open your app regularly you need to or you know on a daily yes. basis or weekly you need to look at how much money you how have much weekly money you've been spending. You, or daily set a streak around mm-hmm. that because you want to be intentional with it don't be afraid of the money choose to use the money in a way that's going to be powerful for you yep i think all those things are great lessons well we have certainly found it valuable talking with you because it helps clarify our thoughts. Hopefully you found it useful. Next time we are going to discuss we are going to discuss this wonderful article in Entrepreneur Magazine, How to Become a Master at Talking to Strangers. And this is from a book that he wrote, right? Yeah. The book is actually called The Power of Strangers, The Benefits of Connecting in a Suspicious World. Okay. So we'll do that next time. Uh, until then, feel free to check out the app. The app is available on the, the I mean, the, the current version of the app is available on Apple or Google Play. You can go out there and grab it. And it's great. I mean, it's great to keep record on and you have a little bit of a community out there. And then that will get you set up for the upgraded app, which will be coming out in the last uh, quarter of this year. We're hopefully going to be able to get it out for Christmas. And you'll be able to say to give someone the gift of streaking for Christmas. And honestly, you give them that gift, it'll be the best gift that they've ever gotten because it will help them become who they want to be. Truly, 100% believe that. So until then, feel free to reach out to uh, to Jamie or I. You can reach me at Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y at streakingmastery.com. Or Jamie, J-A-M-I at streakingmastery.com. Or feel free to go and 
download the Audible of the book and give it a rating or read the book. And, and give, give it a rating, rating, please. That'd be great. Or if you want to give a rating to this podcast. And you can follow us on Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Facebook. Facebook. We're in all those different areas. But until we talk again. Keep streaking. Keep streaking.